Well, I want to ask you, you mentioned side effects. Um, the side effects for the Moderna vaccine sound concerning. We looked. After the second dose, at least 80% of participants experienced a systemic side effect, ranging from severe chills to fevers. So are these vaccines safe? Well, the, uh, the FDA not being pressured will look hard at that. The FDA is the gold standard of regulators, uh, and their current guidance on this, if they stick with that, is, is very, very appropriate. Uh, and, you know, the, it, the, 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 the side effects were not super severe. That is, it didn't cause permanent health problems for uh, the things there. They, you know, Moderna did have to go with a fairly high dose. And so, uh, you know, to get the antibodies, some of the other vaccines uh, are going able to go with lower doses to get uh, responses that are, are pretty high, including the, the J&J and the Pfizer. And so there's a lot of characteristics of these vaccines. Um, it's great that we have multiple of them uh, that but are Bill, going out there. And, and yes, I you, think- You know the data the better than I do. But the bill, Bill, the, the data showed that everybody with a high dose had a, a side effect. Yeah, but some of that is is not dramatic where, you know, it's just, you know, super painful. But yes, there we need to make sure there's not severe side effects. The FDA, uh, I, I, I think, will do a good job of that uh, despite the pressure. How many doses of the vaccine will we need? Well, none of the vaccines at this point appear like they'll work with a single dose. That was the, the hope at the very beginning. Uh, maybe one of them, particularly in the second generation, won't surprise us. We hope just two, although in the elderly, sometimes uh, it, it takes more. And, and so making sure we have lots of elderly people in the trial will give us that data. You've said some more than 7 billion doses. That's what we'll need. Well, if, if what you're trying to do is block all the transmission, then you need to get you know, 70, 80% coverage on a global basis. So that, you know, it's unbelievably big numbers. I mean, you're talking about a global vaccination program without a vaccine that hasn't been fully developed yet and a massive scaling up of how to produce one or several vaccines. I mean, it's just, it's mind boggling to think about this effort. Around 50 anti-vaccine protesters shouted slogans and burned face masks in Johannesburg on Wednesday, July 1st, a week after the start of Africa's first human trial of vaccine against COVID-19. I'm not happy at all. I'm not happy at all. I mean, this feels like 1981 all over again, or in the 1980s all over again, when the AIDS pandemic just broke out in SA. It feels like the same thing. It's like, it's like a replay, but this time they're doing it in our face. The vaccine is being tested by Britain's Oxford University with local partner, the University of Witwatersrand. But the trial, consisting of 2,000 volunteers in South Africa, has also prompted a fresh wave of anti-vaccine sentiment, reflecting fears of Africans being used as guinea pigs. Community activist Walter Mashilo said the vaccine should first be tested on lawmakers and ministers' children before being used on poor people. We want them to be in forefront of testing this vaccine to show leadership. What you're saying is you're prescribing it and it is working for COVID-19 patients. Every patient I prescribed it to has been very, very ill and within 8 to 12 hours they were basically symptom free. And so Wow. Clinically, I am seeing a resolution that mirrors what we saw in the French study and some of the other studies worldwide. Um, but what I am seeing is that people are taking it alone by itself. It's not having efficacy. Okay. Wow. That is uh, that's very interesting news, and and hopefully uh, we can get that more widespread. Dr. Anthony Cardillo, thank you so much. For